Hey, what is up everybody? This is Mark and today I'm going to walk you through how to make cutout words with a stand-up base. And I'm going to use Illustrator to show you how. And I'm going to show you four different types of names or four different types of fonts that you might have to deal with and the ways that I deal with them. So sit back and relax, grab your computer, follow along. I think this is really going to help you as I walk through all four of these. So before I start, let me just uh, review with you really quickly the four different types of names I have here. So I've got my name twice here. I've got Mark and Mark here. The first one, I'm going to show you how to do this where none of the letters are touching. They're all separate and they're going to be cut out separately and then they're going to go into a base. The next one, I'm going to make it with thicker, uh, with thicker font and I'm going to have everything touching each other so to make it a little easier, but it's a different look. Third one is Angela, which is my wife's name. I'm going to show you how to deal with a cursive font that has uh, a letter going below the baseline. I'm going to give you uh, one or two options on that. And then the fourth one, my daughter's name, I'm going to say uh, Ryan. We're going to talk about how to do this with letters that are unconnected and how you would deal with that. And not only unconnected, but also going below the baseline again. I'll go quickly, but I want to make sure that I cover as much as I can here. So hopefully... First thing is that you are fairly familiar with how to use Illustrator and text. So if you want to use text, the first thing you do is select it, right click on it, and go to Create Outlines. And now it is an outline and no longer an edit editable uh, text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a tab that connects to the bottom of these and then a base that the tab goes into. And we're going to do the, the same tab and base four different times. Before we do the tab, what I want you to consider is whether you want the letters this spaced out or whether you'd like them closer together. If you like them closer together, you select it and then ungroup. And then you can select each letter and you can change the spacing to whatever you'd like. So I'll just do something like this. I'm just going to eyeball it. That sounds good. All right, I'm going to go back and just group that together again just to make it easier for myself. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a tab that goes across the bottom that's going to go into the base, and we're going to make the base. Now, I should have said this at the beginning, but the first thing you need to do is you need to measure your material with your calipers so that you know how thick it is. Because the tab that you make that goes on the bottom and the slot that goes in the base are going to be relative to that. I know that my material measures 0.21, 0.21. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a rectangle here. And the length isn't isn't super important, but you want it to be able to touch in this. I'm sorry, let me back up. It's very important in this particular one because you need this tab to touch all of the bottoms of the letters so that they're supported. OK, because they're not touching each other, they're going to have to be supported completely from the bottom. So in this case, I want this rectangle to be long enough to touch the bottom of all of these letters like that. All right. And then the height is going to be, again, the thickness of my material. So I'm going to go to Transform. And uh, I'm not going to mess with the width at all, but I'm going to make this 0.21. Okay, 0.21. And I'm going to go to Outline View, which is Command-Y, so that I can see how all this is lining up. And I'm going to just move this down so it's touching them, but not, uh, not going too far. Okay, Notice this, the A goes quite a bit below the line. You're going to have to deal with that in a lot of fonts. So you can decide if you'd like to move that up or not. You can ungroup and, uh, and you can then take the A and move it up if you want and decide how you want to handle that. I'm going to leave it the way it is because it doesn't bother me. But that's something you have to consider. And then once you have this tab, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste it so that I can use it here in just a minute for my slot. And then I'm going to select everything. And then I'm going to go to Pathfinder Unite. And you see when I unite everything, you see that it all becomes one piece. We're almost done already. We've got this copied and pasted piece. It's the same length there, so I'm not going to mess with the length, but I am going to change the height. Here's the deal. You can leave it the way it is, and it will be a loose fit, and you'll be able to do it with glue. Or you can edit this to accommodate for kerf. I've got other videos for that. Essentially, the average kerf amount average is 0 0.01. Hear me out, that's not always the kerf amount, but that's a place you can start. I just did this earlier today, so I know that 0 0.01 works for me. So I'm going to go up to transform, and I'm going to go to make this 0 0.20, just like that. And that's going to fit nice and snug. 
Last thing I need to do is make my base. So I'm going to make a rectangle around this one. And then I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to go to align. I'm going to align the center and vertical align center so that's nice and centered there. Looks great. Before I forget, I'm going to copy and paste this one more time because I'm going to use that later. I just want to make sure I don't lose it. And now all I got to do is select those. I don't even have to do this part. Select those and Pathfinder minus front. And now, whoops, sorry, minus back in this case. And now that's all one, one piece. You see that? That's all one piece. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way, but there's my cutout and my base. So let's move to the next one. This one I'm going to do a little differently. We'll select, right click, create outlines. And what I'm going to do now is ungroup. And then I'm going to move the letters close to each other so they're touching. This is just a style that I like to do sometimes. It makes life a little easier. Um, oh, and I already see something. This is a great learning opportunity. I see that the sides of the R and the A are both flat. So I don't know if I'm going to like the look of that when they go together. So we're going to, we're going to look at that a bit here. I'll move the K over. And uh, you see, yep, see, I, I didn't really think this one through. That's going to look really odd when it's connected, as is this, this um, flat piece here. So uh, I get a, a chance to mess with this in front of everybody without a plan, which is going to be great. <laughs> um, so I, I don't really like the way that, that fits together like that. So let me think about what I could do. Um, yep, I have never done this before. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try adding maybe a shape uh, to the end of this R. Uh, and maybe make it rounded and see what that looks like. Uh, nothing like doing this on the fly. That's exciting. And uh, let's let's try this. See how this looks. Um, I'm going to go to direct selection tool right here, this arrow. And I'm going to grab this piece that's sticking out here. I'm just going to drag it up into there. Uh, I, this is not going to be a really neat edit. Um, I'm sorry for not being more prepared on this one. I didn't think about how this is going to work. I think that's going to, it's going to pass at least. So what I'll do now is I'll select these two and then uh, Pathfinder Unite. And you know what? I can, I can live with that. It's not, not exactly what I wanted, but that's okay. A uh, <laughs> little goofy, but you see where I'm going with that. And then this, this part right here, what I'm probably going to do, again, I should have picked a different font. But I'm going to direct selection tool, and I'm going to see if I can drag this this piece out like this to give it a little tail, like that. And I, you know, I kind of like that a little better. And so now I can take the R and overlap them a little bit like that, so that they're connected, but they're not uh, that that section in between is not completely gone. So now that they're all connected, I'm going to select them all. Pathfinder Unite, and now I've got a single shape there. So now if I wanted to, I can go and get this tab right here that we that we uh, copied. I'm going to copy and paste it again. And now I can put this tab, you can probably pick up the rhythm here. You can make this tab as long or as short as you want now, as long as it touches some of the, the uh, pieces there, because now it's all connected. And this is probably not the greatest of examples. Um, of how I would normally do this, but you'll get the idea here. So if I wanted to make it like that, I could, because everything's connected there. So just for this argument, uh, just for this argument, just for this uh, pro project here, we'll go ahead and do it this way. I'll make sure that it's overlapping just a tiny bit so that they're connected when I when I connect them. I'm going to copy and paste uh, this down here so I can use it for the slot. Select all these. Pathfinder Unite, and now I've got this thing. So now all I got to do is make a base again. You get the op option to make it as long as the letters or as short just for fun. I'll make it shorter, make it like this. And then I'm going to select those two. I'm going to go to align, center, center. And now if I want to, I can uh, Pathfinder. Whoops, I did it again. Pathfinder, you not, I'm sorry, Pathfinder minus back. And there we go. So there's two of them there. Let's move on to the last three. <laughs> Uh, this one here, I typed out her name. I'm going to create outlines. And you see, before I do anything else, when I created outlines, you see that these words are not connected, or letters are not connected. So the first thing I need to do is select all of these, Pathfinder Unite, and now they're all connected. So now I get to decide how I want to deal with making a base with something like this. 
In this case, if I use quarter inch material, it's going to be pretty sturdy. And I could put the base right here on the G and it would float like that. And I think that would look really good. So let me just do that. Uh, I'm going to go over here and grab uh, this thing again, this one that we had here, copy paste. Uh, oh, sorry, let me back up a second. I forgot to adjust this for kerf, so I'm going to double click on it so I can edit it. Transform, I'm going to make it, uh, oh, it already is, my fault. Uh, it already is, so let's go back here. Okay, so here's our tab again. Now, here's an interesting op opportunity. I can make this tab much shorter if I want to, like maybe down to say, let's go down to here. And it's just going to connect to the bottom of the G. And then we're going to make that, I'm going to copy paste that again. And we're going to make that our supporting tab. Now, you could probably make this even smaller if you wanted to pretty much not be visible. And this is one of those times when this is going to need to be a nice fit because it's going to uh, be supporting the entire word. So I'm going to copy and paste that again. And let me see, what, what size is this? It is 0.2. So this one should have technically been 0.21. And I'll tell you why. It's not a big deal at all. 0.21. Because that is the thickness of your material. And you want, um, you want it to be flush with the bottom of the base. When you put it in there, it's not going to be a big deal. Especially since we're overlapping it right there. It doesn't make, make a whole lot of difference. Move this down. This is my slot. Move that down a little bit. Select both of these. Pathfinder Unite, and now we've got that right there. And then, because this one's long, I'm going to make the base longer like this because I, I want it to have enough uh, support uh, so it doesn't want to tip over. And I think that's probably going to be all right. Select those two, align, center and center, and then it's probably minus back. And by the way, the minus back, minus front, all that has to do with is uh, where these two pieces are in relation to each other in the layers. If one's above the other, it's going to be minus front or minus back. So that's how you figure that out. All right, so there's three of them. Let's go to the fourth one. I hope this is helping. Fourth one, we're going to start by right-clicking, uh, create outlines. And now this one is going to be fun. We're going to need to move some letters. Maybe we need to create some connections. So let's do this a little bit. I'm going to click on it. Uh, and ungroup so that I can move letters individually. So this R, I'm going to move it into the Y, and that's going to be just fine to do that, right? So I'll, just so we see what's happening, I'll go here and I'll, I'll Pathfinder Unite, and that's what that's going to look like. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to be fine with A-N-N-E -N -N -E, like that. But here's the connection I need. One of the ways that I, that one of the methods I use to kind of, it's not really cheating, but just do faster, is I will... Uh, use a shape that's already in the font to make that connection. So for example, I'm going to, how about if I do maybe either a parentheses like that? Watch what I do here. I'm going to turn it sideways and make it bigger. And I'll make it even a little bigger because I want it nice and thick. And then I'm going to right click, create outlines. And now I've got a shape that's right from that font that'll probably work just fine. You see this? So then I'm going to use part of this as the connector connector right there. I'm going to go to the direct selection tool and I'm going to see if I can chop off some of these pieces. Yeah, I probably can. So I'm going to select these three nodes, go up here to the minus, uh, remove anchor points, and see it cut those all down. And now I've got this shape that, that I can hide the ends of it inside the Y and the A. And so watch what happens here. Now if I select all these and Pathfinder Unite, I've got a connection that looks pretty normal. All right, so now we're almost done. We can do the same thing we did up here, but here's the deal. This Y is not centered, so it might have a little bit of challenge with balance, depending on how this works. So, you know, we've got a couple different options. We can try it anyway, which probably will be all right. Or we can create a shape under here that somehow looks good and still uh, supports it. There's a couple different ways we could do it. I'm going to go up here to the ruler and just click and drag down so I have a guideline so I know where I'm at. So here's the bottom of the Y right here, right? And I'm in outline mode. Let me go to Command Y so I can see this more solidly. 
I'm not going to do it this way just because that's the way I did it last time. I'll do it different. I'm going to create a shape of some sort that goes in here. And, I, I, you know, I don't really have anything in mind, so let me just uh, think about what I could do. You know, I, I could actually use that parentheses again, maybe. Let me see what happens here. Um, see what that looks like. If I were to turn it sideways. Again, it's really fun to be creating on the fly while everybody's watching. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, you know, something like that could work. Like this. It, it's a little bit of a, a strange shape. Um, but that is one way we could do it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, let me think of any other way I could do it. I could also do... Actually, you know what? I'll go back to that. I'll go back to that. Let's see. I could also make that one just a little thinner. I don't really like how how thick it is. Um, so what I could do is just kind of stretch it out of shape. And uh, sorry that you get to watch me kind of figure this out. Uh, I'm going to create outlines because it, it was, remember it was part of a font, right? And we can play with this a little bit. Um, it doesn't even really matter what touches the bottom as long as you get another support point. I'm going to try something like this. Let me see. I'm not going to belabor this too long, but you, you get the idea of trying to create something that supports uh, in another place besides the Y, right? I'm not a giant fan of that, but we're going to go with it because I want you to just get the idea, right? So I'm going to select all of these together, hit the uh, Pathfinder Unite, and now I've got these shapes. I'll go to the Outline View again. And now all I got to do again is make my base. So I've got this tab. I'm going to copy paste. And I believe, if I remember right, that one needs to be 0.21 because that's my thickness of my material there. I'm going to get rid of the guideline because it's uh, visually in my way now. I don't really need it. So I'm just going to drag it onto the trash. And now all I need to do is make my tab. It doesn't need to be that long. So I'll bring it into here, bring it into here. And I think that'll work. I'm going to copy paste so that I can make my uh, slot 0 0.20. And all I got to do now is select these. Pathfinder Unite. I can make a, uh, a rectangle here. I'm going to select both of them. Align center and center. And then Pathfinder, I think it's minus back now. Yeah, there it goes. And there we are with four different ways to do this. I hope that helped. I'm going to go and cut all four of these so you can see how they come out, and we'll both learn something. So I'll be right back. Okay, they all came out really well. Let me show you these one at a time. I made one change after the last part of the video. I changed this slot right here back to the same width as the actual material. So in other words, 0.21 to show you the difference. So this one here, 0.21 fits in nice and uh, it's loose, it, but it fits fine. But it, you can see it can actually uh, move right through there pretty easily because it's kind of loose, but it works just fine. And uh, that's what it would look like if you did not adjust for kerf. So my point is you don't really need to if you don't want to, that works out fine. Here's the next one. This one fits nice and snug because I did adjust it. And you can see now that it fits in just like that. Angela, this works great. Again, the same kind of snug fit right there. Get that all the way in there. And then there's that base right there. Works great. And then, of course, last one, Ryan, the one we made at the end. That one fits in nicely as well, just like that. So I hope that helps you make some cool cutout words with bases. As always, let me know if you have any questions, and I'd love to see what you guys make.